Well, well, last time I was here, we were celebrating you've been in the venue for a year. And uh, I can remember you saying, oh yeah, I'm concentrating on the kids and um, coaches and things like that. I've got a few fighters. <laughs> you've got a few fighters, you go to the Golden Gloves and clean up, mate. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, uh, I, I, did, I, I know they're going to do well, but I didn't expect that much because we just started uh, May last year and of course uh, COVID-19 took, took five months out of that. But uh, the kids been training well and, and, and trained hard. So yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, you know, like um, that's the guideline, isn't it? The Golden Gloves, everybody wants to go to the Golden Gloves when they're fighting. And uh, to come away with so many, many medals, like, tell us a little bit about who you thought had a chance and who surprised you or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I mean, I, I, I love training kids. Uh, the youngest we took was uh, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds like a, a contradiction because I don't really believe in, in fighting the kids too young. Uh, but, you know, uh, some of these kids, uh, they, they, they're so mature because they, uh, they train with me, you know, for years, uh, even as young as seven or eight years old. Uh, yes, I, uh, it was, uh, but, you know, they, they were ready, you know, they were ready. And uh, yeah, so it was really awesome result, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the, the Golden Gloves for people that are overseas and watching it and, and just um, what the competition's like. The, 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 the North Island Golden Gloves is probably the biggest uh, competition in, in the country. And, uh, and, and it's bigger than the national because the national, they only focus on uh, open class. Uh, people have, uh, you know, 15, 20 fights and ready to fight at the national. Uh, the Golden Gloves, uh, they have it as young as cadets, novice and cadets uh, uh, open. So. But uh, having said that, this year was very quiet because everybody got sick. Um, and that probably helped us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so a lot of good boxers uh, couldn't compete because uh, this flu was going around was, was actually affecting a lot of people. Actually, maybe more than a COVID-19. Wow. Um, yeah, you're very modest when you say you help you because I know what helps the boys, it's, it, it's you. And um, tell us what the plans are from here on in. Uh, the, 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 my main focus now is uh, I'm coaching the new end boxing team. Uh, we, we're taking four boxers to, the, to Birmingham. So, um, Yes, we, we, and we take Xavier, uh, Duke, uh, who fought for us at the National, as well as uh, De Niro, uh, and, and Travis uh, is a veteran boxer for New So, um, yes, it sort of remind me of coaching the Tongan boxing team uh, back in 2010. We went there as, as total underdogs and, and we came back with two medals. So it was a very, very uh, proud moment for, for, for Tonga and, and, and all our guys. So, um, and uh, you know, when you look down uh, at, and when you cook all up new way and you look how many, you know, population, there's 1600 people. So you can't be more underdog than that. <laughs> uh, you know, but we have some quality boxes. Uh, and I think on, on paper they, they were better than the, the Tongan team we took in 2010. So hopefully uh, we, we, we get a, a reasonably good draw. Um, so the boys, uh, you know, show their thing and hopefully make uh, New Way proud, you know. I'm, so, I'm yeah. sure they will. I'm sure they will. Tell, tell us a little bit about it because um, we all know the islands um, struggle with uh, finances and things like that. How does it work?
The uh, Commonwealth Committee, help, do they give you a hand out? Or? Yes, I mean, uh, they, they, they do, they do help. But because it's, it's a small nation, everybody work together. Uh, a lot of, of uh, New End people who put in money for our course, put money for our training camp. Uh, besides, it's not like New Zealand where you, when you, when you take uh, the track and field, boxing, wrestling, archery, you know, you know, in New Wales we only have three teams. I think uh, lawn bowling and a uh, couple of people with, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for weightlifting and boxing. So all their resources are focused on those three teams. So um, that, that helped us financially uh, in not so much of the, of the sport in New Wales. Of course they do and then, um, but you know, in, as, a, as a nation, they make a big deal of this uh, because you know, going in. I think this is the first. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's the biggest team in boxing they ever taking this. Uh, they're always good. They have good boxers. I remember back in 2006, a guy called um, Starter was. He was a boxer in New Zealand, and he was very unlucky. He fought one of the African boys, and and um, and I think he put him on an eight count but still lost the fight. And they put a, uh, uh, you know, complaint, you know, but it wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't successful. So they would have a medal then, you know. So, uh, so hopefully we can, <coughs> we can uh, de de break that, that non-medal thing for New and then and come back with, uh, you know, with a medal or two, you know. Uh, but yeah, the, the boys are ready and, and they are as good as any boxers New Zealand and Australia taking. Uh, are they going to do any, um, are you doing any work with them here? Be yes, we, we, we've been camping here. Actually, we, we start camping uh, and our development since uh, uh, early this year. And we, to go to the Golden Gloves, we went to the, uh, to the New Zealand um, National, we, we, we pick up one gold medal there. The other guy that uh, they missed out, I, I thought we, he did enough to win. Um, and you know, we, again we went to the gold to the gold uh, golden gloves and uh, young fella Xavier, who's one of our uh, probably our best medal chances. Uh, he didn't just pick up his division, but he got. Uh, the elite uh, open uh, box of the tournament, as well as the most scientific for all the seniors, and he's only 19. So, uh, yeah, so it's our development and, and camping. Uh, one of our other guys fought an Australian one. So we, we, although it's, it's low profile, we, we, we've been working behind the scene and get this guy ready for Birmingham. Uh, and when, when do you leave? And uh, we're leaving on the 22nd of July. Uh, and and I guess uh, once we get there, we'll, we'll find out. Hopefully, we get a draw. But we, we work so hard that even if we have a tough uh, draw, we, we can handle it. So uh, yeah, but uh, the draw make a big difference. So yeah. I wish you all the best. There wouldn't be too many um, coaches around that have trained more than one team. You know, like your <laughs> Tong and team and. Down the way. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I was going to go or not. I mean, uh, number one, it's, it's, it's my health, uh, and number two, the gym has been growing. You know, so uh, and Lola was going to come with us uh, to help out, but uh, he's staying and look after the the gym with uh, Leonard and Rodney and Mick and, and Oscar. So yeah, so you're lucky that we got good reliable guys back here to look after the gym. You've trained a lot of boys over the years, and uh, you treat them like your son. But this time, you did have your son. <laughs> How was that? Uh, it, it was. It was. It was actually quite uh, nerve-wracking. Not. Not. Not for the fact. Not because of the ability, because he he got sick a week before, the before we left with the Golden Glove, and 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 I can't make excuse for my son because a few other kids got sick too. Uh, and, and some of them got sick on the day we left there, but to, to get the result we got, it was it was really you know it, you know it was very special, very special. Uh, but having Lolo there fighting his first fight, uh, that was very different. And and 
and I after he after he won the final, I feel like jump up and down, but I said I can't do that because I got other kids uh, after this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I was I was happy with his uh, performance and oh, on his first fight, he actually won the, the most scientific uh, boxer um, of the youth and, and juniors, uh, you know. So I I was sitting in the back talking to some of the trainers because I was happy that he did well in this fight. I didn't anything, expect anything else. But while we were talking in the back, they were having the little prize giving and um, and the boys came running to me, hey, look, look, look at the prize. So uh, I walk outside and here he was standing in the middle of the ring with a big belt in there and and, and uh, presented by Rex Jenkins, the, 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 the organizer. <laughs> so uh, how the hell did that happen, you know? But yeah. It, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was to see my own son have a championship belt in his first, first fight. Um, you know, it, it was, uh, it was very, very special, Tony. And, uh, you know, I think probably more to my wife because she doesn't really know what's going on. I, I know how hard he trains. I know how, how much he concentrates on, 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 on little things and, um, and how, how many questions he asks over the years, and he still does, you know. Uh, and, and he did the little things right. Of course, there's uh, so much to, to, to learn. But uh, I was happy with his uh, selection of, of punches and, and, uh, and a distance and, and, and range variation when to box from the outside, when to go in, when to put the pressure on, when you see the opponent start tiring down a little bit. Uh, he did all that. He did every little details, uh, including uh, uh, if, you, if you like the fight strategy, because I knew he was sick, and I didn't want him to to get drawn into a to a to a slugfest. Because I know uh, the other the coach and team knew that was his first fight, so they they are gonna put the pressure, try and put the pressure in. So um, I told him not to go all out, you know, just throw, uh, flick 80% power, see everything, and, um, and, and, and just move around. Don't let yourself, uh, don't set any pattern for the other guy to, you know. And he did, he did that, and he didn't really, he did just enough to win and, and, and work high work rate, but not, not loading up his power in case he gets tired because he had a flu on a week before. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not easy for anyone to, to take instruction, but I, I guess because he grew up in a sport, you know, I mean, I still remember the, when, when he was about two years old, um, I got my stuff to leave to the gym and he cried to come with me and Leonardo was going to keep him home in case you'll come and be a nuisance at the gym. And I said, look, let him come. He'll get bored sitting there doing nothing and watching everybody. And 15 years later, he still will follow me to the gym. <laughs> 15 years, he still follow me to the gym. <laughs> yeah. So much for that. Plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, without trying and, and break on too much. But my son, he's he's a student of the of the sport. You know, he he loves it. You know, if he. If there's rugby or boxing, he'll watch boxing. You know, so um, and he anything with the fight fight games. I I, I try to get him to um, him and, and his brother to get interested in kickboxing. You know, <laughs> because we we have four programs here for our kids, and we have uh, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, and jiu jitsu. Well, the other one like boxing, and the other one like wrestling. <laughs> So um, yeah, and and Rodney won the the secondary school uh, uh, novice wrestling championship only about a couple of weeks before the national. So I said to Lola and the boys, um, no pressure, guys, but Rodney won the <laughs> gold medal. You guys have two as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I was only saying uh, as a joke, uh, and and really, Tony, I, I didn't really put any pressure on, on Lola in the fight. I just look, just go there, son, and enjoy yourself, and uh, you know. You know, follow the instruction and just, but most importantly, try and have fun and enjoy yourself. And he did, and, and he, 
Q1, the fight was very, very comfortable. So Akin's a very, very good and, and tough uh, as a boxer. So I can't ask for more. So <laughs> Come away happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> happy and proud. Yeah, yeah. Lolo, I've got a question about the professionalism and the amateur blending in now for the games. Like David Nike has gone for his third gold medal and uh, he's basically he's a professional now. Uh, is, is that a good rule? Um, <clears throat> it, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a really tough question. Uh, I mean, um, I, I guess it's, it's nothing new in terms of uh, a lot of other sports, you know, with, with, uh, you know, with soccer and, and uh, some of the other, I think basketball has some of the professional, you know. Uh, <coughs> but I mean, they don't, the, the, the confusing part is we have different regulations, uh, different nations, and, and New Zealand have different rules. I think in New Zealand you're only allowed to have five professional uh, fight. You know, so then you're going to have to make a choice whether you're going to stay pro or stay, stay amateur. And of course, a lot of pros they're going to they go the other way because they get paid. Um, I think the last guy who uh, won the super heavyweight uh, gold medal at the last Olympic Games. I think he's had more professional fights than he might have even had a Dustin boxing, a, a pro boxing fight. So, uh, to me, it, it's it's up to the to the national body. But I just wish that they have one rule for every nations rather than like in in Australia, you can have as many kickboxing fights, and if you go to 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 boxing, you you you, you only start from the bottom as an amateur boxer, you know. Um, in New Zealand it's different and, and I think maybe New Zealand is will be right in terms of, you know, um, too much advantage of, you know. But if, for me, uh, Tony, it's, it, I, I like to see, I like to see it, uh, the door open for some of the, for professional fighters to, to, to to have enter the right to trial for the Olympic Games, even 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 if they're just going to make it for that level, you know, uh, if they think that um, amateur boxers, uh, professional boxers, are too advanced over the amateur going into the um, local tournaments or uh, golden clubs or whatever, you want your best team for the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. so allow some of the professional boxers to, to trial out since they're going to be fighting high level amateur too so there's no risk of somebody get too beaten up because he's had more experience um, I for me personally it's, it's I think it's two different style of, of um, fighting um, professional fighters will not always going to be advantage because they used to fighting 12 round fights there's different pace between three round and 12 round so by the time that they um you know wake up and start working the, the fight's over <laughs> on three yeah, rounds you know yeah. so yeah so uh so on that on that respect i don't think the professional fighters too advantage over the, the amateur fighters when you come down to to, to scoring uh, system so yeah but anyway that's interesting uh, yeah because um the, the big controversy of course that you were involved in was when doug viney is um one to go from kickboxing to boxing to the olympics yeah and uh, that was a hell of a job yes i mean i I uh, I was probably the most hated guy in New Zealand boxing then <laughs> because a lot of them they don't understand the rules. Uh, I uh, we, we did a homework. I I, uh, I needed a heavy weight, and uh, I look up the. Of course, I was working working very closely with the Thais, and our own Penta Arapong here. He he actually qualified 
do the Thai men team Olympic in 1982. Uh, I think it was at. Uh, LA, I think it was, where Holyfield w had this controversial fight with Gavin Berry. That was at the very, very tournament. And, uh, and Fanta was qualified to the, I said, how come you, you know, like, did you box before you die box? No, I had over 300 kickboxing, die boxing fight, you know, before that. And, and of course, you know, in Thailand, there's no such thing as amateur. Even 10-year-old kids fight for 10 bucks, you know. Uh, when they help in the ring, it, there's no... So I studied, uh, you know, the, the Khao Sai brothers and then all those uh, famous boxers in, in Thailand. Um, and they all have heaps of hundreds of professional kickboxing fights, switch over and, and trial for the Olympic Games. Uh, Another one of my friends in Australia, his name is Grant Barker. He actually fought uh, Vitali Klitschko for world title um, professional fight, kickboxing fight. I think it's 1992 or 1993, uh, and he got knocked out by Vitali Klitschko. You know, on a, on a professional kickboxing fight. 1996, uh, Vitali qualified for the Olympic Games for Ukraine. So. Same is another case of uh, Pele Reed also in, in the UK. The guy that Ray Sefford knocked out at K1, you know, he was a, you know, he was a professional kickboxer, you know, uh, fighting for, uh, fighting amateur in, in the UK. So I got all this evidence and I put them all together as a document. Because uh, when I took Ducky and they found out, uh, did you, said, did you know that Ducky would fight professional? Yes. You know, how can you not see it? Because it was on TV, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I made no secret, I didn't lie. I, but I also have my evidence and my doc I document the whole thing. So it went as far as I was uh, boss at the time, the, guy called, uh, the guy's name called uh, Professor Chowdhury. He was the president of IBA. He took a, a look at it uh, nice, and he threw it away. He said, no, nah, no, nah, he can box, you know? Because um, Thailand, uh, was very, very strong in, in with IBA and the whole Thai team, you currently they have over at least a couple hundred Thai boxing professional fight before they switch over to boxing. So I, I knew all those evidence and I remember driving one day and I hear Murray Decker um, doing the radio talk back, is this boxer who had a professional boxing fight can, you know, you know, and everybody, all the haters, oh yeah, he said, what a cheat, blah, blah. And I, I you know, and, and Keith Walker was hoping there, and, and I couldn't stand it any longer, so I rang <laughs> up my day, I said, <laughs> and I explained it to him. So I explained to him about those dive fighters switching over, about the Klitschko brothers, and, and I just, and that was the end of the dog pack. <laughs> they, they, they talk about different subjects. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I never, that was the first time and the last time I ring up a radio talk back. <laughs> I was going to so, say, yeah. that's a bit better than a little bit.